Hey guys, Alton here. First off, I want to say thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. And for today's video, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at one of my selected lectures from my best selling 10 and a half hour introduction to information security management course. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. In this video, we're going to talk about hardware firewalls. So when we talk about firewalls, they are at the foundation of our defense in depth strategy when it comes to network security. And when we think about network security, firewalls are really one of the fundamental devices that we use. So I have a basic diagram down here. We have the network over here on the left, which is of course going to be completely untrusted. And this is where all of our malicious users are going to try to get into our network. Then we have our network firewall protecting the perimeter of our network. And then within our network is our internal portion of our network, which we want to protect from any malicious users outside of our network. And so that's the whole goal of a firewall. And this is just a simple example of a perimeter network firewall. Now, when we talk about hardware firewalls, their goal is to protect our organization, our network, our computers, our data, our asset, all of that from network-based attacks. And then on the flip side, we have host-based firewalls. So the firewall that is built into your Windows operating system, that's host-based. That's not going to protect us from a network-based attack on our entire network, but it is going to protect the computer that it's installed on. So how do network-based or hardware firewalls work? Well, they work by filtering data packets that go through them. So based upon rules that are set in place, certain types of data is going to be allowed to bypass them and other types aren't going to be allowed to bypass them. And just like I said a second ago, they can either be network based, which is hardware or host based, which is software. So now let's talk about the four different types of hardware firewalls. So there's four different types and we're going to talk about each one separately on their own slide. So the first generation and the most simplest type is packet filtering. And then there is circuit level filtering. There's application level filtering. And then there's stateful multi-layer inspection filtering firewalls. So we're going to talk about each one separately on their own slide. So let's start with the packet filtering firewalls. So packet filtering firewalls are considered first generation firewalls and they're the most basic type of a firewall as well as the most inexpensive type of a hardware based firewall. So how do they work? Well, they work by inspecting every single packet that tries to traverse through a firewall. And the way that it works is that we as the administrator, we set up some predefined rules. And based upon these rules, it's going to look at each packet and it's going to determine if a packet is either allowed or denied. And we call these predefined rules, we call them ACLs, which means an access control list. Now, how are these rules set up? Well, they're set up based upon some common TCP IP packet attributes, such as our source IP address, a destination IP address, a specific IP protocol based upon its port that's typically assigned to it. So either a source or a destination TCP or UDP port, and it can also be assigned to the inbound or outbound firewall network interface. Now, because this is all static information and it's not based upon the state of a packet, such as whether it's part of an active TCP IP TCP session, we consider these stateless firewalls. So to give you an example, what we could do, and let me get rid of all of my highlighting. Let's say that we only want to allow connections to our FTP server to come from a specific IP address and only be allowed to go to our specific IP address of our server. So what would we need to do? Well, to create this ACL, we would need to input the source IP address that we're going to allow the connection to come from. And we're going to have to put in the destination IP address of our server as well. And then, of course, we need to know what ports FTP operates on because that's going to allow us to assign that to the allowed port numbers. So, for example, FTP is TCP ports 20 and 21. And so that's going to assign this 
to a specific IP protocol, which is going to be the FTP protocol. So if we get any sort of a connection, let's say somebody's trying to connect to port 20 of TCP, but it's not for our server's IP address, or it's not coming from one of our loud source IP addresses, then it's going to be denied. So that's a very simple example of setting up an ACL. And that's our overview of packet filtering firewalls. So again, they're very basic. They're the most affordable type of a firewall, and they're considered our first generation firewall that is also a stateless firewall. So the next type of firewall that we want to talk about is something called a circuit level firewall. So circuit level firewalls are considered our second generation type of a firewall, and they differ from our first generation packet filtering firewall by operating at the transport layer of the OSI model. So layer four of the OSI model where TCP and UDP resides. And specifically what they do is they monitor TCP sessions. So what does this mean? Well, what they do is instead of analyzing each individual packet that traverses through them or tries to traverse through them, what they do is they monitor the TCP handshake for valid handshake sessions. So remember back from your basic computer networking courses that at OSI layer four, there is a transport layer that has TCP and UDP. UDP is connectionless. It's a best effort type of a transport layer protocol whereas TCP is connection oriented. And before you communicate with another device on another network or the same network, you have to perform that three-way handshake, which is the SYN, SYNAC, and ACK, which I have highlighted down here. So what is this type of firewall going to do? Well, it's gonna look at this. It's gonna look at this three-way handshake. It's gonna determine if a session is valid or not and valid TCP sessions are gonna be allowed to pass, whereas invalid and terminated sessions aren't gonna be allowed to pass through the firewall. So why is this important? Well, it's important in the sense that we know that a TCP session is valid, and we know that packets potentially haven't been altered with, because what hackers can do is they can alter this three-way handshake in a process to attempt to cause something that we call a denial of service attack, a DOS attack. So if the firewall believes that an attack is occurring, then of course they're gonna block the traffic. So if they think that it's either an invalid or terminated session, they're not gonna let the traffic through. So that's our second generation type of a firewall, our circuit level firewall. Just remember that it operates at layer four of the OSI model, which is our transport layer, and they monitor the TCP handshake. They monitor specifically the TCP sessions. So next we're gonna talk about application level firewalls on the next slide. So application level firewalls are more commonly referred to as a proxy server. And proxy servers operate at the application layer of the OSI model, so layer 7 of the OSI model. Now, they provide three specific common types of services. And when we think about a firewall, well, of course, they provide filtering services, but they also provide caching and logging services. So why is this? Well, they're commonly used to filter out websites. So if you've ever worked in a large organization and you try to go to Facebook and it says, sorry, this website is not allowed because it's categorized as social media. That would be a proxy server. And so what they do is they operate at the application layer and HTTP is at the application layer. So they're gonna be able to filter packets based on specific applications or services. Now, in addition to that, to improve network performance, they also provide caching. So for example, let's say that somebody goes to Google and they search for a specific terminology and it takes them to a website with that information. The first time that somebody visits that, the proxy server is going to retrieve it and it's going to cache it in its memory. So the next time that somebody goes to request that exact same information, the proxy server can retrieve it from its cache rather than going out to the internet. And this is going to save internet or we can call it broadband bandwidth. Now, in addition to all this, it provides logging as well. So we want to know when users are trying to access inappropriate things, such as maybe they're trying to access inappropriate websites at work. So we can also log user activity 
for auditing purposes as well. So that's an application level firewall or most commonly referred to as a proxy server. So we have one more type of firewall that we're going to talk about in this lecture, and that's going to be stateful multi-layer inspection firewalls, which we'll discuss on the next slide. So stateful multi-layer inspection firewalls are really a combination of all the different types of firewalls that we've talked about so far, rolled up into a single very powerful firewall. So they provide the functionality of basic packet filtering, circuit level, and application level firewalls all combined into a single firewall. So they can filter traffic not only at the network layer of the OSI model with our basic ACLs, but also at the transport layer by monitoring those TCP sessions, and also at the application layer by looking at specific applications and services that operate at OSI layer seven. So as you can imagine, they're definitely very powerful, but they're also the most expensive type of a network firewall. So that concludes our overview of network-based firewalls and the different types of firewalls. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.